Thorin and I crossed paths at the high school where she was a teacher, a place I had attended many years prior. I was invited to speak at the commencement one year, being an orthodontist, it was an unexpected but welcome opportunity. Unlike some, my wife and I never signed a prenuptial agreement. Back then, the thought didn't even occur to me, but fortunately, it turned out not to be an issue. I've heard countless tales of men who've amassed fortunes only to lose them in divorce proceedings. While I'm not in the billionaire club, I do earn considerably more than my ex-wife, especially now given her job loss. When I first encountered my ex-wife, I was quite taken with her. At 32, I was still youthful and attractive, just beginning my dental practice alongside my friend and business partner. My ex-wife, on the other hand, was stunning. During the commencement preparations, the principal introduced me to fellow speakers and some faculty members who would be assisting. At 27, my wife exuded a magnetic charm, and there was an immediate connection between us. Despite my typically reserved demeanor, her flirtatious gestures were hard to ignore. Before the commencement ceremony commenced, I mustered the courage to suggest we should dine together sometime. To my delight, she accepted with a smile. Our first date was one to remember because I've never had any woman pay on a date before. After I was asking for the check, but she said she got it. I told her she didn't have to pay for her own food, but she insisted on paying for everything. Please allow me, it's my pleasure, she said. I was blown away and shocked. We continued dating for months after that and then became exclusive. It was wonderful, a lot of fun times and amazing memories. But I guess that all changed after two decades of marriage. We had three girls in total, a 24-year-old, a 22-year-old, and another 20-year-old. Today, mind you, it was a stressful time for me and the girls, getting paternity tests done. Yes, they are all grown, but I was prepared to sue someone if they weren't mine after raising them their whole lives. Even if they weren't biologically mine, I was still going to be their father. My girls hate their mother today, and their mother hates me for it, but she brought all of this on herself. She caused all this to happen and ruined everyone's lives. All three girls unanimously agreed that their mother is disgusting. She ruined the family, and they'll never forgive her for it. Now, I don't believe that they'll never speak to their mother again, especially the youngest. They'll speak to her again. I hope they will. I don't want them to disown their mother because of what she did to me and the family, but still, it's their mother at the end of the day, and they have every right to feel the way they feel right now. And I don't blame them, and I don't blame them for it either. In 2005, one night in bed, my wife laughed when she said this, what do you think about an open marriage? Not saying that I want one, but would you ever do something like that? My response was, why would you ask me this? She said she was just asking because she was curious. I said absolutely not and asked if she wanted an open marriage. It's so funny hearing all these stories today after doing some searching online and finding a video about these things. A lot of these stories resemble my story, at least as far as the initial requests for an open relationship or bringing up the topic. But these wives acting as if they have no interest in it is laughable. Now, after a while, she brought up the question again, and in return I asked her what she thought about divorce. She quickly shut up and dropped the topic. Stupid me, I thought I shut it down, but I was wrong. That's a sign of her wanting an open marriage or she's cheating. Now, do I have evidence that she was cheating at this time? No, I believe she at least wanted to. We're going to fast forward up to the pandemic. This is when I found out everything. I found out my wife had been having an affair with a coworker, another teacher who was also married. They have been sleeping together for 12 years. 12 freaking years, and I had no idea. My wife even got rid of a child of his because she was sure it was his. Apparently, at this time, our bedroom was a little non-existent, which is another lesson for anyone. If you and your wife are not having intimate relations, she's more than likely having it with someone else. I personally never strayed and never wanted anyone else. I love my wife, I love my family, and I wasn't going to do anything to ruin that. I read just as many stories where men and husbands were cheating as well, and whenever I read those stories, I said, well, maybe I'm just different. I've always thrown myself into work and my family. When I was able to have my own family, I wasn't interested in any beautiful woman that crossed my path, or anyone that worked with me or for me. I didn't look at them that way, whether they were single or not. I had a wife and a family, and I respected that. When I said those vows, I meant it, but apparently, my wife did not. The pandemic was a tough time. 
business did slow down, at least my office. Usual clients would still come in, but I did notice a decline in people overall. It didn't hurt my business at all, we maintain till this day. Just seeing what was going on in the world was a little scary because no one knew what was happening and what was going to happen and… Sure, here's the corrected version with punctuation and errors corrected. If we were going to make it out of this, my wife kept teaching, but the teaching was done at home. Eventually, she would go into the classroom where some students would be in the school and other students would be at home, and it would switch back and forth. But I caught her cheating when she was fully working at home, teaching from home during summer school. One day, I came home from the office for lunch, as I usually did. So, I'd come home and prepare lunch. I went home that day, my wife was in our downstairs office giggling and laughing. I thought they were talking about something funny in one of her classes or something until I heard her say, you've always made me smile, but what would I do without you? I heard it loud and clear. She was in the office, but the doors were open, and she had no idea I was home. I crept over to the side of the door, and I was still listening. You could hear a guy on the other end of the phone, and my wife was just giggling and laughing, and they were flirting. My wife said, you're going to have to get your wife under control. I was confused and wondering why she would say this, but I continued listening. She then said that she does love her husband with all her heart, but she had needs, and that what I didn't know won't hurt me. That was enough for me to walk into the room and ask who she was talking to. She jumped, turned around, and looked up, and ended the call. I asked who she was talking to, and she said it was a friend. Startled and scared, she said it was a coworker and they were working together for class, that they were discussing some things about work. I asked if she wanted to try that again. I asked her one more time, who are you talking to? She sighed and sat silently, not uttering a single word. I approached her, and she started crying. I asked her why she was crying, and she said she was so sorry. I told her I heard everything, recounted the whole conversation, and finally asked her who she was cheating with. I wanted to know immediately. Her reply was, honey, please, please. I interrupted, please, what? It's obvious that you got caught cheating. I want answers. She threw her hands forward as if to tell me to stop. She took a deep breath and said it was Ken. I knew this guy, I've met him. He teaches algebra at their high school. She continued to tell me that she had been having an affair with him, that she was sorry, and was going to end it. But she just didn't know how because he loved her, and he really wanted to leave his wife for her. She said she felt bad for him but felt like she didn't have a choice, that basically it's not her fault that she cheated on me. I approached her even closer, looking down at her while she was sitting. I said she better hope and pray that my girls are mine and that we were getting a divorce, and she was getting the F out of my house. She tried to talk, but I quickly left. I went straight to hunting to find a lawyer. It only took a couple of days for me to find a great and amazing lawyer that was worth every penny. I told my lawyer that I was going to DNA test my children, and if even just one of them is not mine, I'll be suing the father, and my wife gets nothing from me, not a single I'm not a dime. And if all children were mine, my youngest at the time was 17 going to 18. If I had to pay for anything, of course, I would, but my wife was getting absolutely nothing from me, not even the house. I made this clear to my lawyer that she gets nothing, he made sure this happened. I hired a PI suggested and put together by my lawyer. He stated that we needed evidence of infidelity on my wife's part. He also scolded me, asking if I had ever cheated on her, abused her, then been arrested for DUI. He kept asking me those things, sometimes in different ways. I now know he just wanted to be sure that there was nothing on me to present me as the perfect husband. Of course, no one is perfect, but I can comfortably say I was darn good to my ex-wife. She never wanted anything during the marriage. After speaking with the PI and me giving permission to search through the computers in my home and anything that was in my home, he discovered emails, secret credit cards, phone number applications. Her and this man had been having affairs for years since he started working for the high school in 2009. My wife was pregnant with his baby, he retrieved documents via email stating the appointment to terminate the kid. Everything. I couldn't believe I was sleeping next to someone who was betraying me every night. We kissed each other, said goodnight, that we loved each other. How can someone do those things and carry on an affair like it's nothing? My wife moved out and stayed with her family. All three of my girls were initially upset with me. Her mother told them a completely different story about what happened. 
I don't know how the heck she thought that lie would keep up, but she told them that I've been mentally abusing her for years, that she did her best to hide it from them and never wanted either of them to lose their father, so she never filed for divorce. She told them that she had plans to file for divorce once they were all grown and out of the house and that she was also terrified to divorce me. She said she found comfort in her co-worker but never slept with him. Ever. That he had only been a friend to her. My oldest daughter led the three of them when they came home to confront me. My oldest is a very tough cookie. She's a personal trainer and very successful within her industry, but she got in my face and confronted me. She was asking me, how dare I abuse their mom like that? What the F was wrong with me? I said, abuse? I never abused your mom. Who told you that? My youngest said, we talked to mom, and she said you've abused her for years, as she burst into tears. I grabbed her to hug her and said, your mother is a god darn liar. I never abused her. I discovered her affair with her coworker and evidence that she was pregnant with his child, which she terminated. I filed for divorce, hired a PI, and have all the evidence to prove that. I'm telling you the truth, and your mother lied to you. My oldest asked for the evidence, and I showed them everything, messages from some online phone number that she used with him, emails, hotel receipts, secret credit cards, and the documents showing the appointment to terminate the baby. My youngest apologized, but my oldest was even more pissed off. Not at me, though. She was upset with her mother as she called her, put her on speaker, and scolded her for lying. My ex-wife kept up with her story and claimed I was making things up until my daughter said, We saw that you terminated the baby you had with your coworker. You said that you never slept with him. My wife got quiet then hung up the phone. My daughter tried calling multiple times, but my ex-wife never answered. I know what a freaking coward, I exclaimed. I explained to my girls that I love them and I will always be their father, but how important it is that we get DNA tests done. All of them began to cry. We sat there and hugged, exchanged I love yous, and we all went to sleep that night in agreement that a DNA paternity test was a must. We got the results less than 48 hours after the testing. That next week, all three were indeed mine. We all cried again when we found out. That time it was tears of joy. My daughters told me they will be by my side through all of this, and certainly, they were. I filed in April of 2020. My divorce wasn't finalized until this past July, three whole years, friends. The pandemic slowed things down tremendously. She was unwilling to divorce and delayed the process a couple of times. There was a disagreement on terms of settlement. I ended up having to buy her out of the home. No alimony, of course. No child support. She got nothing from me except me buying her out. All three of my girls spoke in my defense when she tried to paint me as this sick abuser who tortured her. I can't believe she tried to do that. I never even remember a time I yelled at my wife. June of 2021, I found out that my ex-wife was terminated along with Ken. Funny enough, around that time, I started to get a bunch of random reviews from my office. Those have been cleared. Such a petty move on their part. She just found another position in a different district. I don't know about Ken. I do know his wife was not going to divorce him. Not my business. Every dime spent on this divorce was well worth it. I'm thankful for my children. Like I said, they absolutely hate their mother, refusing to see her during holidays, and my ex-wife is very depressed about it. She attends therapy sessions where the therapist attempted to involve my ex-wife and our daughters, but they all declined. While my youngest briefly considered it, she was persuaded against it by her siblings. It's likely that my youngest will be the first to reconcile with her mother, possibly even without anyone knowing. She's undoubtedly very close to her mother. Guys, learn from my experience. Don't disregard your wife's request for an open marriage, it's a clear sign she's ready to move on. I'll never know if my wife cheated on me before suggesting the open marriage, but the 12-year affair I did find out about was enough to end our marriage. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.